Okay, here we've created a file called Overlapping Features, and I'm going to try to follow along with the tutorial, um, uh, the manual. Uh, we go. We got the overlapping features. We're going to use a three-axis vertical mill. We're going to uh, material is irrelevant. We're going to set it at uh, stock size of three minus three, three minus three. Zero and minus one. <clears throat> and we're going to save that. Close this, and then we're going to do some simple geometry stuff here. Open a geometry palette and a view palette. I'm going to go to the home view, select uh, <coughs> points, explicit point, x, y, z, zero, and I'm going to create a point there. I'm using the double point because I'm going to continue. And you can see it labeled it as P1. That's because I have my labels turned on here with either control L or go to the view and turn them on from the view list. Now it's showing me the points as they're created. Next I'm going to create a point from a bolt circle, two inch radius, three holes, 120 degrees apart, starting at 90, going clockwise. So there we get one at 90, that's P2, P3, P4. P2, P3, P4. Okay. Now we want to create some circles, so we're going to use the circle creation. We're going to do a radius center point. Uh, we want half inch radius. And then we need to pick a point or give it a Cartesian point. So we're going to select this point first, this one next, and this one next. And then I'm going to select multiple circles, or to stay in the circle palette, I should say. And it's going to create the multiple circles, C1, C2, and C3. Now I need to create C4, so I'm going to change this to a 2-inch radius. Select that center point, and tell it to create the circle, and draw it back to the top uh, menu of the geometry palette. So now we have four circles, C1, C2, C3, and C4. So we're going to connect. C1 to C4. We're going to pick a point at which they connect. It wants to know which point. We're going to say that point. And I'm going to start there and I'm going to go around this thing like I was going to take a tool and go around the features of the final chain that I want to do here. So say OK to that. You can see it turns that into a blue connected point P5. I'm going to select this circle and that circle. I'm going to say now connect those two pieces together. On that side, I'm going to say OK to that, or hit the Enter a space bar, and it trims it to that arc. Now I'm going to select that arc and do a Control D to duplicate the two inch circle again, and I'm going to select this circle, tell it to connect on the opposite side. That connection point here, and as you can see, the points are in fashion of how the tool would pass around this piece of geometry. There to there, connect, connect, do it, trim that arc. Now we're going to duplicate the circle again, and we'll trim the last arc between the last two circles. Okay, this circle, this circle, connect, either here or right click and use the contact menu. Okay, here, here, connect. That point, OK. And you can see we have that feature created. Uh, the arcs are reversed, so we're going to highlight all three of them. Go to Modify, Reverse Arc, or Control T off the keyboard. And there is the longhand method of trimming that together to make it a usable chain to be able to put toolpath to. OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the undo function, control Z, and I'm going to control Z all the way back to where we had our original four circles, four points. And there we are. Now we're going to do the easy method where I'm going to select this circle first, then the three smaller circles secondly. I'm going to go to features or shape. I'm going to go to combine shapes. And I'm going to say union these shapes together. Boom. Done. So you can see it 
follows along and uh, everything seems to be in line with the tutorial. I hope this helps.